Right, hi guys. Ugh. It's bleeding, freezing cold today. Um, today we are doing an EICR. It's a consumer unit we've already already installed. And yes, I know you should be doing EICR the other way around, but you'll know why. I have to change this consumer unit first. Today we have a special guest, collab. No, it's not a collab. Um, we've got John with us today. What's your name, John? John. John. Yeah. His name's John. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What are you doing? Why are you here? What's your history? Whatever. Whatever you want. Go yeah. for it. Yeah, so basically working full time as a carpenter at the moment. I uh, just want to change the direction and I think the way the, the world is going, going into energy and electricity and stuff, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I want to change the direction and career. So yeah, just moving into the electrical trade um, mm -hmm. and doing my courses. Uh, an evening course at Moulton in Northampton. So, yeah, just... Um, what course are you doing? Uh, sitting Gills 2365. What level? Um, level 2. Level 2. And what module are you doing right now? Um, we're currently working through uh, principles of mass and science. So principles of electrical science. Electrical yeah, science. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so, yeah, just going through that at the moment. How are you finding that? Yeah, it's, um, it's actually pretty good. Um, that's the hardest one. Once this one's out of the way, it's not. It's all plain sailing, to be honest with you. That's the hardest one. As we all know, we've all been there, all done it. Yeah, I think it's just getting, as an adult learner as well, um, going back into study again. Um, it's, it's not easy for everyone, but um, no. it's just getting back into it. And really enjoy it. So I'm here with Dean today to, to get experience and, and learn yeah. the trade hands-on, which I Brilliant. think is... You know, you yeah perfect it. so john's going to be, be with us every friday uh so it's now friday uh first of december pinch punch first day of month you can't do it back to me i'm the boss don't forget <laughs> even though i don't pay you um right so yeah where did you get in your advent calendar today um, i haven't got one you haven't got an <laughs> advent calendar <laughs> that's sad oh. i forgot to open mine today i do have one but i forgot to open it john will be with us every Friday going forwards. And we'll see what other jobs we've got coming up. Next week we've got EV Charger. Be interested to film that Zappy EV Charger and go over a bit about pen fault detection, that sort of thing. So today we are doing an EICR, as I said, on a consumer unit we've already installed. So I've, I've actually, I've known John for about probably five years, is it, I suppose? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Like that. Playing pool and snooker together, so that's how we know each other. Oh. Thank you, Fusebox. These are great. Thank you. John really wants one, don't you, John? Yeah, just not pink. <laughs> I'm sorry, they don't come in any other colour. But they really need it this time of year. It's so cold. So let's show you the consumer unit. Oh, it's a bit dark, isn't it? It's light. This is consumer unit. It's a 10-way fuse box with RCBO. I'll put up a little video of the previous consumer unit and you'll know why we had to change it. Can you see anything wrong? How many mistakes can you see? How would you do this one? Would you just change it and then do an ICR or do an ICR first? Let us know in the comments. John, yes. do you want to know how to make everyone on YouTube hate you? Go on. Show them this. That's right, isn't it? That's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Neat. So you got these two. <sighs> Wrong place, but you'll see in a minute the towels could only just reach to there. Right. Um, I'm wondering okay. if we can install the towels on the left side and, and the main switch on the left side. There's no problem, but it's just the only problem I can see is that you need to change the um, buzz bar, not buzz bars, the neutral and earth terminals at the top. Yeah. yeah, so this has got today's date already. We've, we've magically already installed it. Now we've done a little bit of a um, test the other day, just a minimal test, and now we're going to do a thorough test because it's not had a proper test yet. But we had to change it because it was what we call a distress change. Yeah, I'd say it's a bit of a distress change because it had an RCD and the RCD wasn't doing nothing because it was installed very, very poorly. So that's it, we're gonna get cracking and 
Got my knees and get some testing done. So John, in electrical bits and pieces, there are three types of testing. There's what we call initial verification, and that's when you just made something and you need to test it before you put it into service. You've got an EICR, what we're doing now, and then you've got fault finding testing. So three different types of testing that we do. Um, when you do initial verification, you have to go through certain steps as we saw the other time. The weeks back. Yeah, we, we've done a third party yeah. certification. Um, as we saw a few few weeks ago, you've got to go through certain tests and if you don't get a, the right result on one test, you have to keep, you have to fix that problem before you go to the next one. When you're doing EICR, you can do the test in any order you want. Um, you don't have to do all your, the tests. Um, depending on what type of EICR it is, we won't do all the tests. We now do two types of EICR. We do a full test, which is pretty similar to initial verification, so we do everything. And then we do a minor test, which if the customer's had previous certificate, typically landlords, we'll do a minor test. Um, things like installation resistance, R2 tests, RCD tests, um, okay. just to verify that the circuits have not deteriorated in, in like five years since last yeah. test, and also to make sure that it's not been a van test. Because one thing you'll come across, John, is you get EICRs that are done and they have the same sort of template for every single yeah. um, installation, and they'll just copy and paste it and they don't test it they're in and out within 20 minutes and their cowboys do about six or seven day a day where in reality you can probably do two a day or well, depends on what tests you're doing two possibly three at a push i would never do any more than that so that's that and then you've got fault finding you can do obviously a test in any order that you feel necessary you might not even need to do any testing um but fault finding is something that comes with time you will yeah. you'll get better at it the longer you you're, you're in an electric attrition yeah. yeah or and, and when you're on your own that's when you really start to learn what's the first test we're going to do if it was an initial verification john remember what we've done the other week tested um, john if you didn't know the answer to something how would you find the answer um i'd probably look up my books on site guide yeah Go idea. So you got one. Funny enough. He's got one. Yeah, I'm like, go. And there's a brown one. I'm impressed. Funny enough, I've already got it on the sequence of tests. Oh, look, and I haven't even told him that. You think I've planned that. I haven't. That's how good he is. Oh, so good. so good. what page are we on? Uh, 112, sequence of tests. So what is the first test we're going to do? Does it say there? Um, continuity of circuit protective conductors. Which is, how do we do that normally? Do you remember what we done last time? I think we went round and tested all the earth. Yeah. Um, on all the sockets. Using what? Wonderlead. Wonderlead. Yeah, well done. So you can do testing of the earth continuity using either R2 Wonderlead tests or an R1, R2. If it was just one circuit we were testing, I'd do R1, R2. But if you're doing any ICR or you want to test loads of points, I'd use a Wonderlead. Just run around and you yeah. get it all knocked out in no time at all. So let's see what circuits we've got. So we've got a shower, oven, cupboard socket, that's that one there. All right. Sockets and immersion, lights upstairs, lights downstairs. So now we've got our R2 Wonder lead. We're ready to go. Anything we need to do, John? Uh, connect our lead to the earthing bar. To the earth bar? Yeah. In the consumer or in electrical terms, we call it main earthing terminal. So yeah, your earth bar and your consumer unit. Yeah. Uh, we just connect it straight up. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Anything else we need to do? Um, I'm giving you a bit of a clue. Zero out of leads. Saying, what? Zero out of leads. Zero out of leads. Well done. Put it on continuity. It will say zero. Oh no, it says 1.16. Why does it say 1.16? Uh, it's measuring the resistance of your wonder lead. Yeah. So we need to get rid of that. Put them together. And there we are. Zero point zero zero. Put this in the cupboard. And then we wander around. Do room at 
one room at a time. Yeah. What I do when I'm doing this is I use a socket tester as well. They're not nice. to be relied on, but okay. um, it's a good indication. If it says earth fault, you can bet that's going to be an earth fault. Yeah. And I unplug things as we're going along. So otherwise it can affect the readings in your insulation resistance testing. So 0.36, plug this in. Okay, and then go around and switch on lights and things like that. Make sure they work. The last thing you want to do is um, go around the house and then the customer will blame you because the light's not working and it was working before. Ooh, I found something here, look. If I press that, it says live circuit. That's interesting. I have to have a look at that. So we'll make a note in our observations. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this off just to take a look now. Because it said live circuit, I'm gonna use my things so I don't get shot myself. Over the years has mm -hmm. stopped it from moving. Yeah. Okay. Success. Let's have a look at this, see why it says live circuit. It's got an earth to the back box. So that back box might have a what we call phantom voltage. It is protected by RCD, so it says live circuit. Just put it onto bolts and see how many bolts we get. It's only going to be 50 volts, which touch voltage can be 60 volts, I think. That indicates that we've got some sort of voltage there, which could be from the light fitting yeah. that this is supplying. Could be 40. So if we put this on the light, itself it is metal which is classed as um, class one okay. so it needs to have an earth and that says live circuit so let's put it onto volts again and we should have 50 volts here yeah we've got 50 volts there so we'll take that down take a look at it a bit later so when I'm doing a, any testing I'll go clockwise around the room make sure these are working Yep, you don't have to have an earth continuity here because it's probably not connected okay. to the back box. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And that's outside, I think. It's not in here. What I'm going to do, make sure we remember to put the fridge back in. That's the one thing we always make sure. 0.31, that's good. That's good on that as well. And that's pretty much what we do throughout the whole house. We're not going to film every mm. single point we're going to go to because um, otherwise it'd be all day. Got a question? What's the question? Are we going to test uh, metal radiators? Why would you, we need to test metal radiators? Not, I'm not, I'm just, um, just trying to carry as an earth. Uh, why would it carry an earth? Try and just think about uh, it. So this is this connected to the boiler. Yeah. In past, previously, if you didn't have an RCD, you'd have to have, have, to have what we call supplementary bonding. <clears throat> because we've got RCDs fitted, we don't need to have supplementary bonding. Right. But this should be getting a this should be getting a, a earth path because it connects it to the boiler. So it's what we call parallel paths, sort of thing. So right. have a test. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Anywhere. Yeah, it's all metal. So. Yeah, 1.5. Uh, yeah. So it's getting the um, earth path from the boiler. Right. Anything else we need to test in there? Uh, we have electrical shower. Electrical shower. So what should we test in there, do you reckon? I'm just going to put it on this pipe and find out. Go for it, yeah. And getting nothing. Okay. So 
So if you hold to take the uh, front off. Yeah. Whenever you're doing this, always put the plugs in the shower or in the sink or whatever. Otherwise, you don't want to lose the yeah. um, screws. But yeah, you're right to take this off. There you go. Like <laughs> and screws. <laughs> All this one. Can you identify what the where the earth is on that? Um, RS cable here. That's not the main earth cable. Main earth. If you look, that's where the cable comes in. Okay. So you've got line neutral and you've got earth there, so that's your earth point there. Right. Careful not to touch anything metal because it's, it is alive in there. Yeah. 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 What do we have? 0.57. 0.57. Is there anything else we can do whilst we're here? Uh, yeah, the pull cord. With the shower. Oh, with the shower. Um, One of the things that are important, especially in the shower, is um, polarity. Making sure that okay. that line is definitely a line. Making sure that that's neutral, definitely neutral. Um, it's safe, similar to your safe isolation. So what you do is you do your safe isolation. We're not going to do it here because we, have, we need to disconnect the leads and everything. We're going to put the cover back on this um, so that the customer doesn't get an electric shock. But you do safe isolation and you test. You're testing like your polarity, making sure that sure. lines there, line neutral there, and so on. Also, something we can check is the uh, kilowatt of the shower. Yeah. So it's eight point five kilowatts, which is how many amps? How would we find out how many amps is? By a triangle formula. What triangle? Power triangle. No. Nope. Mm. It's not called a power triangle. I know what you're on about. Yeah. But okay. so you tell me what to do on my calculator. My calculator's there. You tell me what to do. Um so we would so you've got eight point five kilowatts. Yeah, okay. come on, and to turn it to watts, you're going to go 8,500 watts. 8,500. Yeah, and divide that by your resistance. Resistance, is that right? Oh, sorry, your voltage. Voltage, sorry. and what's voltage? Um, 230. Yeah, 230, nominal current. So Not nominal voltage, sorry. So that's our amps, 36.95 um, amps. So 37 amps let's say we've got it on a 40 amp breaker and we have six mil towed i know from experience six mil is fine for um 36 amps 37 amps i think it's up to about 43 amps something like that right. i can't bother checking someone put it in the comments so we're going to use our quality lap tester only the best for the doctor please don't judge me this is my spare one. I only use this if I've got my CPS and my one is in my car, which is in somewhere in France. I don't know where, but if I don't get it back by January, I'm gonna go and buy a proper, proper one. Lap ones are absolutely rubbish. But they comply, so let's see. 230, that's good. Off the line, off the neutral, off the earth. Okay. Back in the earth. Neutral, no voltage. Off, off, mm -hmm. and then neutral to the line, 230. Perfect. Off the line, off the neutral. So that tells us that the polarity for the shower Perfect. is right. And we're not gonna have any problems with it. No signs of any burning. Make sure you don't turn the knobs as you're taking it off. If you do, then put everything back to the minimum and you adjust this back to the minimum or whatever on there. Yeah. So what are we doing? We're doing CBC. Well, what's that there? Looks like some kind of isolation switch. What could it be for? That's electrical and requires possibly an isolation. Looks like. What's near here that is electrical that could require an isolation? That's quite a big current um, switch, like a 40 amp switch. So something like the boiler? Boiler? Possibly where's the boiler? Um, downstairs. Downstairs, yeah. So you won't have an isolation switch up here for the boiler. Right. If it's not here. So what could be here that may require isolation? Something in the loft. Something in the loft. What could that be? What could be in the loft? I have no idea. Yeah, no idea. Okay. <laughs> That's a 40 amp switch. And on the other side of that 
is what? On the opposite side of the wall. Electric um, shower. Shower. So what do you think that is? The isolator for the electric shower. There you go. Let's, let's switch it off and see if the electric shower goes off. And there we go, we had the light there. Well, we don't have a light anymore. And just to prove it, it doesn't come on. So yeah, that's the electric, the isolator for the electric shower. So that's perfect. Mm -hmm. And we have 0.13. Good. Keep going. Oh, now I have two point three point. That's quite high, isn't it? That's uh, okay. It's not stable. It's not what no. the stable. So we can make a note of that. And what's this? Do you know what that is? Um, immersion heater. Immersion heater. You have to speak up a bit. Immersion heater. Yeah, you got it. Immersion heater, no problem. It's been shaved a bit so you can fit in. You can see. Yeah, mm -hmm. typical immersion heater. So we got any bonding on this? There should be bonding. Have, have a look. It'd be on one of the pipes around the side yeah. or something. So, what can we test on it here? Um, well, I can't find a bonding pipe. Bonding pipe, yeah. yeah. Just, just uh, let's check it on one of the pipes. Oh. Yeah, that's zero point one three. Yeah, so, and that's your pump. That's your pump there. Yeah, water pump. Making sure that the cables, you've got some sort of mark there. Make sure there's no damage, no uh, thermal damage or anything. Or is that normal that's... for colour or? That that looks that... like it's had a bit of thermal damage. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty. And that is going to be a little, like little box, junction box wiring or... centre. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't go in there because it, when you open them, it's just a nightmare. Okay. Yeah, you can't work it out. I, don't, I can't work them out. Right, check down light switches. And what we have to do is we have to 20% of the accessories. Accessories are sockets, light switches, light fittings, anything. Uh, we need to take off 20% just to inspect inside like we did in the kitchen. Um, so if you look at this, oh, can we take this off? Yeah, that's it. So stop what you're doing. I wouldn't take this off. Because what we've got is we've got limitations. If you look at the outside of it, yeah, sure. some of it is like buried into the wall. If you look on the side yeah. profile, yeah. it's buried. So if you take that off, it's going to crumble all this wrap away. And you yeah. can see it's been filled in, so that's going to all crumble. Yeah. So that'll be a limitation. And one of the limitations are we don't remove, remove accessories where you can damage the decor. So we can leave that as a limitation. Only remove it if we need to, if we find a fault. Right. And there's no way back. So, good. In this room. Oh, John, look. Oh, we have a light. Do you know what? You've got no friends! <laughs> what? <laughs> you, won't, you won't know what I just put up on the screen. But watch the video and then you'll see. So this is just, uh, these are a nightmare to get up. When you install these, you can see there's a joist there. You need to make sure yeah. it goes in the joist. They're very heavy. Whenever I install these, I, I allow two hours to install them because they're a nightmare. So customer don't always go for it, but never mind, I don't care. So let's see if the fan works. Oh, they've, wired probably it. Off. they've wired it to the switch line. Whenever whenever I install these, I wire where well, you're supposed to wire it to the permanent live. Yeah. Ooh. Oh god. We should go off in a minute. You could be here already. Uh, oh, we that's have it. success. I'm gonna leave that light switch on. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna wait that's, for the fan to stop rotating. That's wired to the <laughs> switch line. So if that was just the permanent line then yeah. We wouldn't have to worry about whether the light switch was on or off. We could yeah. be able to pull these and yeah, that's it. Go for it. So nice. if you test up there, yeah, I'll, I'll turn the fan on first, and then you can. Um, you need to be quick, mate. It's all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a Russian roulette. It's only a little mo. I think you can just. There we go. That's it. 
Okay, so because it's to okay. the switch line, I guess that's why we're not. <clears throat> so test it on one of the metal parts around here. You are getting enough, 16.6, which is quite high. I mean, actually, see that. If you test it on this bit here, you'd probably get a better earth. There you go. Oh, cool. It's because that's so high because it's going through all these bits and pieces. Yeah, sure. And then that's the last point. So if you test it here, that's where the electric will be coming in and switching and everything. Come on in. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, that's a wonder land. Right, so we have a damaged light switch here. Oh. That is. So what, will, check that out, what will we do with this? Um, let's take this off. Let's have a look. What what would we'll do first? Let's just do in it our, in our um, notebook. Uh, put it down as an observation. Observation, yeah. yeah. In observations, you've got um, different codes. Do you know about these yet? Um, I've, we haven't touched on codes as of yet, but having watched a uh, plenty of YouTube videos, I've, I've <coughs> heard about codes one, two, and three. Yeah. I think code one being the worst. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then code two, it's not really immediate danger, but worth investigating. And code three, it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Any other codes can we have? Um, not that I'm aware of. There yeah. are some other codes. We've got two other codes, which are um, F5, which means further investigation required. Okay. And we've got NA, which is non-applicable. Right. So what would you code this? Um... I'd put it down as a C2. C2? That's just my opinion, but... Why C2? Um, just definitely needs, like, repairing and checking over. So it's damaged, it needs... Why not a C1? Um, yeah, true. I guess if you had damp hands, you know, you could get a shock by trying you to turn could, off. You'd get a shock yeah. anyway. Anyway. Uh, lights, okay. which is, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. The difference is, uh, C1, you'd be able to touch live parts. Yeah. Um, on any accessory, you need to have no more than two mil um, gap. So there is a yeah. tiny little gap there. Yeah. It's less than two mil, I'd say. Yeah. So you're not going to be able to get your fingers get in. Your fingers in. Um, so, yeah, I'd agree that would be a C2. If it, had, if it was cracked, you, know, you can see the metal part there, yeah. then that would be a C1, because you can actually touch it. Yeah, that's C2. Either way, we'll be changing that today. Another thing I need to say to you as well is when you're doing the ICR, you're not here as an electrician, you're here as an inspector. So you, what you're supposed to do, and I know we, none of us do this, you're supposed to just make a note of that, then come back another time to change it. I'm not going to fail an installation just because of that. I'll do that as I go. So... Just bearing that, bear that in mind. If you're going for your 2391, you'll know that's what they say to you. You're an inspector, you're not an electrician. So you need to book in another appointment to come back and change that and charge millions of pounds. So we've got anything else we can see in here? Yeah, we've got some exposed um, cable in, uh, in light. Exposed fitting. cable? Yeah, so Ooh. I'll see if we need. So look at that. Yeah, so exposed, do you know what we call that part of the cable? Um, conductors. It's oh. called basic insulation. Basic insulation. You yeah. need to know different yeah. types of the yeah. different parts of cable. So this is the sheath, and that's your basic insulation. And inside that, you've got your got cables. cables. We've got yeah. conductors. Yeah. Why is that a problem? Because I can't see any um, any metal or anything on there. So why is that a problem? It's um, I guess has the potential to to sort of degrade. I guess if, yeah. if I'm being picky, and then. Yeah, it just needs like full insulation, just so it's protective. So in case anybody wants to try and change the light switch or yeah, um, stuff like that. So there's two things I would note on that um, from experience. You're not allowed to be able to touch basic insulation because that yeah. is the last <coughs> the last resort against getting an electric shock. Yeah. If that's failed, then you can get an electric shock. Yeah. Also, if you've got basic insulation showing that shows that there's a lot of tension being put on the light fitting. Okay. So possibly it's been pulled at some point. Yeah. And you literally, the only thing holding that light up is the terminal screws inside the yeah, ceiling sure. rows. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely need to change it over. Yeah. Mark it as a observation. Well done. He's learning, eh? Okay, that's us finished upstairs. You happy with everything, John? Uh, not 
not quite. We've still got this um, a loft to investigate. Yep. So. Um, normally, it's most people, rightly or wrongly, would exclude the loft space. Sometimes you you will test the loft space, but from experience, all the cables are be underneath all the insulation and everything. Mm -hmm. It'll be a nightmare to get to. Mm. And it will put e easily a few hours onto your test. So we'll exclude, exclude that as one of our limitations. It's okay. perfectly fine to do. Some people do, some people don't. Yeah, yeah good, good question though. So what were you saying about wiring and stuff earlier with regard to the age of the property you were saying? Yeah, just um, find out. So if you find out what the age of the property, roughly have an idea of... Mm -hmm. The age of the property, sort of, you yeah. get an idea of uh, your wiring and, and yeah. So what you need to do, what you need, what you need to do on your ERCR is estimate the age of the installation. Now you can estimate that by your green main earthing conductor and your black and red conductors. Um, I think I can't remember when it was. I think it was about 1987 that they stopped using. Oh, it might be a bit. I will put put the year up, and you can see here there wasn't a lot of cable to pull through, so it's not the neatest, um, but it's it's all good. Um, some of these cables, I say, it, they didn't even reach the terminals they're supposed to, so just labelled them up to circuit three, circuit four, so the next person knows what the deal is. Water bonding conductor there, good. Main nerfing conductor there. It is only a six mil main earthing conductor. Also with the towels, we did try and pull pull the towels through to try and get a little bit more slack so we can move the main switch up, but it was just so it wasn't moving at all. And there is this insulation in the wall, so that's probably the reason. Now these towels are 16 mil conductors. You can tell that with experience. You get two different sizes mainly, 16 mil and 25 mil. If you've got and a hundred amp fuse, you need to have 25 mil um, towels. If you've got an 80 amp or 60 amp fuse, sometimes even a 40 amp needs to be 16 mil towels. Um, but obviously that just depends from installation to installation. Uh, so that's all good. The next test we're going to do is continuity of uh, conductors for the ring final circuit so we'll go to that john today is your lucky day i have been doing this job for about six or seven years now and i this is the first time i've ever seen this you can see these conductors here yeah what color are they uh, it's kind of like silver silver mm. so what could that be it looks like they've put like a i can't remember the name of it but it's like a yeah, I can't remember what they're called. But. Okay, yeah. on, on your regular conductors, yeah. you've got copper. Yeah. Okay, you can see all that. Um, what you get here is you get either copper, you can get um, aluminium covered copper, yeah. or you can get, in this case, full aluminium right. cables. And that will help you to determine the age of the installation as well. Right. Now, I brought this up with my CPS. Um, inspector yesterday and he says as long as test fine then it's okay to carry on and they're not brittle they they can be very i don't know what the right word malleable, malleable when when you yeah. try and screw it in you can damage these quite easy they're not as strong as a copper um so let's test these and make sure they're okay how do we test the continuity of these so we're going to test the red conductors what are the red ones called uh live Live yeah, they are live conductors. Line. In when you're testing as a ring final circuit, these are called R1. All right, so R1, R1. red or the or the brown ones are called R1. Yeah. So if you do end to end on them, so one on that side and one on that side. And what reading do we get? Uh, 0.54. 0.54. Is that yeah. right? So uh, 0.54 ohms. Oh, one. So R1, I put R1 plus R1 equals 0.54. yeah. 0.54 ohms. Ohms. Who said? Who told you to say ohms? 
Mm. You, my lecturer. Yeah, there you go. You always put ohms. Mm. If you're doing an exam and you don't put ohms on the end, you'll lose a mark for that. Yeah. So you, that's worth a mark. Get into the habit of doing it. Yeah. So next one we've got is Rn yeah. plus um, Rn. So that's our neutral to neutral. Let's go. There. And 0 0.68. 0 0.68 ohms. 0 0.68 ohms. R2 plus R2 is what? After. Sorry. Again, sorry. 1.03 ohms. 1.03 ohms. That's quite a bit higher, isn't it? Yeah. Why would that be a higher, do you think? What would make that higher? But you probably won't even know this by now, so I'm not going to hold it against you or anything, but you will get to get to know this in the end. Uh, I'll go out on a limb and say um, the thickness of the resistance, uh, the thickness of the cable, earthing cable. What's the difference between the thickness of the earth cable and the thickness, thickness of the other conductor there? Um, the earthing cable is a lot um, smaller, smaller than, than the line in neutral, so it's got a higher resistance. Is that right? No, really good. Yeah, that's right. So these are typically for a ring final circuit, two point five mil, and the are they one point five or one it should be one point five mil. So, as you said, yeah, there's a difference in thickness between two cables. What we say in the electrical world is a CSA a cross sectional area. If we take the thickness of the R1 and Rn, it's 2.5 mil mm -hmm. square, and divide that by the thickness of the CPC. CPC stands for? Mm -hmm. this. On the spot. Oh, no, it, it's um, circuit protective conductors. Perfect. Um, Which is 1.5 mil square. Again, you need to put the square at the end. Yeah. So we do that. 2.5 let's do it the proper way the college way right it's not like that is it in college we do the line 1.5 mil square so 2.5 mil divided by 1.5 equals 1.6667 so we'll say 1.67 that's the difference so if we take our highest conductor so 0.68 rn mm -hmm. so 0.68 times 1.67 we'll see what we get 68 times 1.67 equals 1.1356 that's what the most it should be which is about right so 1.14 we'd say there which is not too dissimilar to the r2 mm. So that is within range. Okay. We do some more clever calculations. We do what's known as a figure of eight test. So this is small r1 plus small rn. We divide that by four. So we'll do 0.54 ohms plus 0.68 ohms. Divide that by four. And that should give us, what would that give us? 0.54 plus 0.68 equals 1.22. Divide that by 4. 0.305. Well, I said 0.29, so 0.31 ohms. And the reason we divide it by 4 is, let's have a look in the on site guide. It should show us. Yeah, it's got a figure of eight. So similar to the end-to-end -end test, what you're doing now is you're going all around the sockets, all around the house, back to the consumer unit, and then back around the other conductor. So there's, in essence, four cables you're testing, and that's why you're doing, you divide it by four, and then each cable should be 0 0.31 um, when we go around and test yeah. it. So what we'll do is we'll use the Crocodile Clips R1 plus RN, so we've got R1 to RN. So what we need to do is separate uh, the legs of the board. Yeah. One leg over here, and the other leg over there. Yeah. 
Okay, so we do R1 on one side to RN on the other side. And then we do R1 on this side to RN on the other side. Where is it? Just there in the middle. Right there in the middle. Of course, yeah. And this is level three stuff now. So this is way ahead of what you'd be doing. Yeah. So if you do that test between each one of these, so do, do it from uh, the R1 there to the R in there. Just put on the clock. Yeah, that's bit. fine. And let's see what result we get. 0 0.2728. Yeah. 0.28. So uh, we're then pretty range. much pretty much where we should be. Yeah. yeah, what we say is we allow 0 0.05 ohms, so what was it, 0 0.28? 0 0.28, yeah. And we get a 0 0.31. So if we go around to each one of the sockets, should have that same result from all the sockets. So we'll get rid of these, get rid of these. We'll use our plug tester. Now we're testing R1 plus RN, so what's R1? Um, remember? Uh, line. A line. Show me the R1, mm -hmm. there. that and What's the RN? That's our neutral. Neutral, yeah. We're testing ohms, so what you do is you, you just put in between the oh, two. Right. Okay, that's fine. And you can leave that out, because we don't need that, and that shows us that that's not being tested as well. Yeah. Um, so we go right around to each of our points, plug in our tester, and we should get around 0 0.28 ohms. So 0 0.31, 0 0.31 yeah, bang on. Good. And what we do as well, keep that plugged in. All right. And we switch it off. And that tells us that the, the conductors are in the right terminals at the back of the socket. Okay. okay. And that yep. tests the polarity. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Good. If you're switching it and nothing happens or nothing, or even when you plug it in and there's no... Um, reading then you've got wrong polarity right. usually so we'll do that a few points again i'm not going to take it all around the house there's one left do it clock yeah. clockwise <clears throat> then you know where you stand so 0.27 perfect so what else do you need to do when we plug that in john that you've got uh, to turn it off to yeah. check for polarity yeah, gone off. Fine. Perfect. This will be the last one we test. What will we show you? We're going to test all of it, obviously. So, 0.26. Yeah. Turn that off. Yeah, that's fine. And perfect. Yeah, perfect. Nice. All right, 0.39. So that one's a bit higher. That's the highest one so far. What if we had a socket that was quite high uh, over and above the other sockets? Could you think of any reasons for that? So, you've got more resistance. Yeah. Um, so it could be that it's a spur from a socket. Okay. That's another one reason. It could also mean that it's a loose connection in the socket. Or it's just not as right. tight yeah. in the socket. Or it could be a poor sure. socket, old socket that's on its way out. Okay. <clears throat> so that's what it usually means. If you get a high reading, just take the socket off. Make sure the terminals are all done up right. And if it's just got one cable in it and you, you test the ring firing circuit, then you can bet that's going to be a spur sure. from a ring circuit. You're only allowed one unfused socket from a um, ring final right. circuit. Are you allowed to have sockets in a bathroom? Um, I'm going to say no. Okay, hold that foot, foot and we'll check the on-site guide. Section 8. Pressure locations contain a bath or a shower. Page 103 of the on-site guide. So, let's see if we can have socket in a bathroom. So this is your shower, you've got different zones in the shower. So for a shower, this, this is a typical shower, you've got different zones, zero, one, two, outside zones. Right. Okay, so zone zero is the shower tray or inside the bath. You see inside the bath, yeah, zone zone zero. And zone zone zero, you're only allowed to have minimum IPX7. That means it needs to be quite waterproof. You'll cover IP ratings at some point. And it has to be 12 volt AC or 30 volt ripple free direct current cell separated extra low voltage. 
you'll see these in swimming pools, things like that. Yeah. Um, you're not allowed any switch gear or accessories in that area, obviously. Mm -hmm. So zone one is the shower cubicle itself up to 2.25 meters. So let's say, let's say about this line, just yeah. for argument's sake, that's 2.25 meters. Yeah. So that is zone one. You're only allowed IPX4 or IPX5 if you've got water jets. If you've got a shower head like this where you can move it about, that's going to be IPX5. Mm -hmm. you're, again, you're allowed 25 volt AC or 60 volt ripple free cell or pelve. You are allowed to have a shower because obviously that's where it gets your le electric from. Mm -hmm. This will be a minimum of IPX5. Sure. Um, and uh, that's the only sort of. Um, you'll see these uh, extractor fans in probably zone, zone one need to be self, so separated extra low voltage. So it's not really connected to the voltage, it, it's separated. You'll cover all that. Yeah. Zone two, which is outside the bathroom, outside, outside the cubicle, up to uh, about 0.6 uh, meters. And that would be zone two and up to 2.25. So this area here, from here, there, say down, set down to yeah. the door, then yeah, that would be zone two. Right. And again, for zone two, we need IPX4, in this case, IPX5, because you've got water jets fixed permanently. Only switches and sockets of cell unit circuits allowed. So mm -hmm. your shaver sockets as well. Yeah, so shavers, obviously. And shaver socket complying with BSEN 6155825 if fixed, where direct spray is unlikely. Yeah. Everything outside this area, so this area here, here, this side of the bathroom is classed as outside zones. Used to be zone three as well, but it's not. It's called outside of zones now. And the outside of zones, you can have IPXXB or IP2X. We don't really need to have waterproof fittings because the IP2, the first one, is dusk. The second one is water. You see, they it, it's regarding water. So you've got dust and water. So that it doesn't have to be waterproof, but IP2X. IP2X is, I think, two mil. Uh, you're not allowed to have a gap more than two mil. Yeah. So general um, light switch should be fine. Uh, accessories, self sockets and shaver sockets to BSE only. 615525 allowed. Socket outlets. Right. Now, it says socket outlets, as in the regular socket outs we see, yeah. are allowed 2.5 mil horizontally from the boundary of zone one. This is zone one. Yeah. So you're allowed to have a socket further than, no minimum than 2.5 mil meters away, which yeah. generally yeah. most bathrooms are not. No. So some bathrooms you might see it. Okay, so, yeah, all right. So you can have a socket in a bathroom. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. So next test we're going to do, I say, because it's in the ICR, we can do any um, any sequence of tests we like. We're going to do what's called insulation resistance test. So you move the knob to insulation, turn that off, and you've got 250 volts there. Okay. If you're doing an initial verification, so first test on the installation, that has to be 500 volts, as you saw we've done before. If you're doing in EICR, you can have it on 250 volts if you can't get to some of the accessories. Now, we can't get to some of the sockets, fridge socket, things like that, and we don't want to damage anything, so we're going to leave it 250, and that's perfectly fine. And what this does is it tests the cables and the ins insulation, and it makes sure, if you look at the um, cable there, it tests that there's no real connection between any of the three cables. And it's not deteriorated or degraded over time. So this is a true test of how good the cables are. So what we do is a global test because it's 250 volts and got things plugged in. Put one thing on, the, one of the clamps on the earth bar, and we connect both of these together. Press the um, button. Three. It's quite low, 
let's have a look on our on-site guide and see what the minimum we should have so cell up to 500 volts so one one mega ohm is the minimum we're allowed but if you've got anything like two mega ohms you're gonna bet it's gonna degrade and trip possibly so if this is three mega ohms it's not great but it is about the minimum if the customer still gets problems of tripping then we'll see what if we can do something about it it's probably not too far away from a rewire and with it being aluminium conductors um, then that's an another thing we need to consider three mega ohms it is still a pass but it's barely a pass so that is the testing done for that circuit for now we will need to do rcd tests on it we'll cover that in a bit so we're getting there nearly done not too not much to go we're getting an installation resistance test the rest of the circuits but you've seen it on one circuit and it's all the same to be honest with you um so how are you finding it so far john yeah it's really good really interesting yeah yeah okay. lots of um, information to take in mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i enjoy it i really love it yeah okay you asked me a question in van what was that yeah just wanted to know what sort of got you into the electrical industry why you chose to become an electrician and not another sort of went down another trade route you know so i used to be a lorry driver as I th you might not even know that probably before you knew me yeah. i was a lorry driver and i used to be in the army you know that yeah. um <clears throat> but when i came out of the army i got medical dis discharge uh, due to ptsd coming back from iraq i couldn't sleep that sort of thing and obviously uh, not sleeping is not good if you're driving a lorry so being on the road all them hours um, you don't want to be falling asleep so i had to find a different career i was I registered disabled and on PIP and ESA and all that sort of things, benefits. And then that's when I took my daughter to college, uh, Northampton College, to have a little look around and she wanted to do some courses in childcare and healthcare and all that sort of thing. Yeah, right. um, and I'll just come back at the end of the day, um, having a look through the prospe prospectus and saw they were doing electrical courses. I, I had a, did have a few beers by then, which I know is a bit of a surprise to you, John. <laughs> um, yeah. So I had a few beers and feeling a little bit merry and I just applied to be on the electrician's course. And then they rung me up or emailed me a couple of days later, inviting me for interview and that. And it just snowballed from there. Yeah. So back. it was a bit of a mistake, really. I was like... It's just one of the things, same as everyone, everyone has these stories of how they got into the electrical industry by mistake. Yeah. It just, just happens. And yeah, I say, went on to be a, a teacher there at college. Um, mm -hmm. Being a teacher in the electrical industry is not as rewarding as you'd think it would be. You look at the likes of Gaz and Joe from eFix, and them guys really passionate. Yeah. Um, but if you've done, if you're taught, uh, the electrical industry to school kids, if you, if you like, teenagers, you'll realise it's hard work and all the paperwork and everything else is hard work. So yeah, that's how I got into the electrical industry. And yeah, I'm happy with it and happy to be my own boss. I've worked for other people before, but I got fed up with people shouting at me and swearing me down the phone. So I'm on my own now and I'm my own boss. So we're going to do installation resistance test and then RCD testing. You said something about RCDs. I can't remember what you said. Um, yeah, just sort of, I think is it 0 0.30 milliamps or they need to trip out well before that. Yeah, so for, it's 30 milliamps 30 is milliamps, the yeah. RCDs. You do get different types of RCDs. You'll get 10 milliamps and you'll get 100 oh. milliamps. Um, but generally you find 30 milliamps is the acceptable. Uh, you'll get 10 milliamps in things like car chargers, things like that, but they're all integrated. You can't even get access to them, so you can't test them. Um, so yeah, they usually trip about 24 to 27 milliamps, I think, and I always get this wrong, So, and someone will write in the comments, I think it's 40 milliamps can kill you, or 45 milliamps can kill you. That's why it trips well under that. I mean. Under 30, I mean, under 30 milliamps, if you are got a dodgy ticker or something, I suppose that can kill you as well. But yeah, should we test it on John? 
There goes my career. Yeah. <laughs> nice knowing you, mate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that. So we're going to do RCD test um, and test ZD. What's a ZD? Um, that's our external earth. Earth. Um, yeah, you, you're right. There, there is a proper term for it, though. Uh, I was going to say it. Earth conductors? Yeah, it's called um, ex external uh, fault loop impedance. That one? Yeah, that one. <laughs> to test that and test our PFCs as well. We'll do that at the end and do our RCE test, as I said, and then that's us good to go. So now what we're going to do is our ZE, which is what, John? Um, earth fault loop impedance. Test. Yeah, yeah. External earth oh, fault external, loop sorry. impedance. So we're taking out the main earthing conductor. You can see somebody's nicely labelled that up for the next electrician. So clamp one side onto your main earthing conductor and then the other side onto your incoming line and you should have a look at the test meter and we should let's have a look what we get 0 0.20 ohms and then make sure you put this straight back into the thing another thing to remember as well is do not disconnect this cable until you've turned off all these circuits. Because if you do have a fault current run, running through the earth con, earthing conductor, then you can cause an arc and cause electric shocks, flashback, that sort of thing. Flash over, I call it. Um, so yeah, make sure it's all turned off. And then we're going to do um, PFC, which is, do you know what that is? Remember yeah. we done it before? Perspective fault current. Yeah. And we, it combines of two different tests, which is what, John? Um, let's just grab the answer, okay? No, it's all right. You don't need your <laughs> no. answer. I'll tell you. Um, you're still like brand new, <laughs> so you're. I can forgive you that one. Um, so it's two different tests that we do for PFC: perspective fault current. This is perspective earth fault current, okay. and this perspective short circuit current. Okay. The higher of them two is your PFC. Right. So this is PEFC. Put it onto PSC. Yeah. You can see. On the, on the um, meter uh, into your line conductor. So one one is on the um, earth terminal and the other one goes into your incoming line. It's perspective earth fault current. When you go to the meter. 1231 amps, or we call that 1.23 kiloamps. Take that off and we change this. 1.23 and we go through the two incoming um, line and neutral yeah. press the test meter again 1466 amps so that's our highest reading so we're going to record that that is 1.46 kilo amps so pfc 1.47 Kiloamps because you round it up. Um, and what that is is each of these circuit breakers have a breaking capacity. And you can see there's a little box. It's going to be really hard to pick it up. You mm. might not pick it up. Mm. I'll put a photo up, yeah. and that yeah. says six thousand. That means six kiloamps. Yeah. Okay. So that's the maximum breaking capacity that that can can have. We've got 1.47 kiloamps, so we're well under that. Nice. So that's good. If they do go over that, sometimes you will get um, installations that will go over six kiloamps, but uh, you'll find you're covered by the main switch. It's going to be either a 16 kiloamp or a 33 kiloamp. Uh, your, your main um, fuse, sorry, not switch. And that's that. We need to do RCD tests now, and then that's all the testing complete. Now we're going to move on to the RCD test. We've got 30 milliamp RCD and amendment two, eighth edition amendment two says that we only need to test one times 30 milliamp at the type AC on different um, different phase rotations. So we'll we'll start on zero and we go. Oh, we need to switch it on. We'll do it one at a time. Oh, can you? Can you unplug that? Yeah. 
Um, so one into a line, one into a neutral. Bear in mind the green, yeah, the nice wrong colour, but I don't have a black one. So one into neutral, one into the line. Press once and it will measure 28 milliseconds. Change the phase to 180, put it back up. Thirty-eight milliseconds. We we record the higher one, which is thirty-eight milliseconds. And there's one more test that we do. And that's the test button. Fine. So that one's passed. We'll leave it off so we know we tested it. And we just move along the line. We do all our RCDs at the same time. And it needs to be under three hundred milliseconds. So, John, learn of the day. Learn of the day with Doctor Electric. What's this, John? Light bulb. A light bulb. Is it, John? Is that a light bulb, John? Looks like it. <laughs> He's wrong, isn't he, people? <laughs> this is one thing that every... I always call them light bulbs. I don't care, because I love upsetting people. And when I speak to customers, I say light bulb. But this is your learning of the day. This is called a lamp. Right. L bulbs are in the ground. They grow plants, flowers. So they say, bulbs grow, lights glow. So what's that, John? A lamp. It's a light bulb, you're wrong. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a lamp. Officially it's a lamp, but a stupid thing. Whenever I speak to a customer, light bulb, I don't care. Yeah. And what else did you have there, John? What do we do with these? Well. What, what was you going to do with this, John? I was gonna put that in the light uh, switch. In the light switch? Or, um, you know, where the screws go. What do we do with them, John? Throw them in the bin. <laughs> He's learning. Why do we throw them in the bin? Um, so we can access the light socket switches. Yeah, because if you ever try and get these off, it's a nightmare trying to get them off. And they lose them very easy. So yeah, there. Chuck them in the bin, mate. That's what everyone does with them. You don't put them on. Whatever you do, do not put them on anything. I catch you doing that, you'll be in trouble. All right? So, this is the open system. Can you remember what we said about open systems and that? Um, three types of open systems. Which are? TT, TNS, and TNCS. Let's have a look. What is this one? Let's have a look. I'm gonna say... Hmm. Okay, it's different. Where's that earth? It's main earthing conductor. Yeah, and where is the main earthing conductor going to? Um, well, it's going into main consumer board. No. Oh, it's going into. Is this a Henley block? Um, it's not a Henley block, no. no. So you've got or your. Some kind of fuse or something? This is your main cable coming in, main yeah. supply cable. This will be your fuse. fuse okay. 60 amp fuse, I think they've got in here. Because. Um, I didn't take it out and have a look. Somebody told me. I inquired with the DNO. That's what you can do. Inquire with the DNO. Yeah, don't touch some fuses. Um, so that's going for a fuse. This is neutral going into a neutral block and then okay. coming out the top. So this, you can't really see, but that will be connected to the neutral block. Okay, so it's a so TNCS. It's going, it's going into a neutral block. So what is it? A TNCS. Yeah. What is it called when it comes out the bottom into a metal sheath? A TNS system. Sorry? A TNS system. So what does TNCS stand for? Um, Remember, he's only like one month into his training. Or two months, actually. Terra. Terra. Neutral. Neutral. Combined. Combined separate. supply. Oh, separate, well, nearly. Separate, and then TNS, what does that stand for? Terra, neutral, separation. Separated so oh, close, separated. but so far, <laughs> still wrong. Uh, and what does TT stand for? Um, terra Terra, which is earth Earth. So it's an electrode or an earthing rod into the ground. Yep, and that is uh, not is it Greek? Not Greek. What do you call it? Latin. Latin. Latin for Earth. Terra is Earth. Right. The end of a lovely day. How do you find that, John? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Did yeah. you learn anything? Yeah. Very insightful. Yeah. Just to, yeah, good to, to get out and, and sort of see how, 
how it all works as, yeah. a, as a as a sparky on the road. So yeah, um, and obviously good to apply all the knowledge back back at college in the evening or on. So yeah, yeah, cool. No, good. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, next week we've got a um, EV charger on the Friday, so that's what we'll be doing, and that'll be a short day as well, half day. Um, as I said, we are going to be at LX in London, which is going to be January, February at Alexandra Palace. So let me know if you're going to that and we'll meet up, have a little chat, coffee, beer, whatever you want. I don't care. John's playing, so help yourself. <laughs> Thanks for me, lad. He's on such a good salary from me. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go to LX. I'll put up the date right here. That's the date it is. I don't know yet because I need to look it up. But it's usually January, February. We'll be there on the Friday of whatever date it is because that's John's day with me. So that's going to work out perfectly. Um, we've just got a fault finding job coming. So we're going to run over to that. It's a Nest thermostat that's not getting any power. So what it is, who knows? Uh, we're getting loads and loads of call outs at the moment. Um, loads and loads. I can't cope with how many we're getting. So that's it. End of the day. One thing left to say, and that is, because he's seen all of my videos, he knows exactly what to say. That is, like, subscribe. No, no, that's not what I say in my videos. I say like. You say comment. Comment. So let's let's try it a little bit again, shall we? Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And subscribe. <laughs> right. Let's work this one out, right? I'm a doctor, right? So what does the doctor do? Fix it. Fix it. Yeah, you're right. Actually, I'll do fix things. <laughs> Actually, there's a long waiting list, and you have to get third in line for the queue to see me. Um, so, right. What we say is, like, comment, share, prescribe. Because I'm uh, a doctor. Right. Come on, work it out. So, one thing left to say, and that is, like... Share. No! Oh my god, this is hard work. This is worse than Adam. This is why we need a script. <laughs> oh my god. Read the auto cue just in front of you, mate. Like, comment, share, prescribe. Right, go again. Should take five. Like, comment, share, prescribe. prescribe. Yay! <laughs>